What's going on, everybody? Welcome into a coffee break on this Thursday. We hope you're all having a wonderful day. We see Paul already in the comments. Says happy Thursday to the amazing coffee break crew. Hope everyone is having a great day so far. No Michigan to Denver flights yet. That that peak anybody's concern level, or do you think that the Greg Penner is going to do this via Zoom, unlike George Payton did, Mike? Uh, nothing yet with, uh, with Jim Harbaugh. I, I, Mike Kliss told us earlier this week, he doesn't expect anything to happen until the end of the month. So, um, what? yeah, that's what Kliss said just the other what? day. I, I do not expect, he said that his words, I don't expect anything to happen uh, with the Broncos. I don't expect a coach to be in place until, uh, the end of the month, three weeks or so. So, um, yeah. So I would think that what, what's holding him back, I, I, I suppose there is the, is the Rooney rule. They, they have to, uh, go around that, but uh, what, what's keeping them from being able to move and move immediately when it comes to a Jim Harbaugh or Sean Payton? Let's go. If this is the guy, if 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 these are the guys, and this is the guy you want, let's go. Let's get it done. End of the month. Exactly. No, what? that's no way. They, they, the 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 Cardinals may be in play. The Panthers are in play. Colts. Um, uh, you know who knows who else. No, this can't wait till the end of the month. That's ridiculous. No, no way. No, 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 no way. The only thing I think is that um, they'll they'll be back channel. Listen, there there's only two guys who are legitimate candidates, and that's Sean Payton and Jim Harbaugh. So you can work a lot of back channel things to figure out what's what, and then once it happens, they'll be I, in my opinion, the last guys to be here like Fox was, because they already knew they wanted John Fox. So they're not going to mess around with that. It's going to be, he's here. We're not letting him get back on the plane. And even with even with um, Hackett, oh, I almost forgot his name. Even with Hackett, you know, he did the whole here. Ooh, ooh. And, and, you know, we're, Hackett you speak of? Yeah, that's, that's a fake memory. And, you know, he was at Lowe's Dose. And then, I don't know, they flew home to get his family and came back. But he was the last one here. And so I anticipate that's the way this will go too. But um, but at the end of the month, come on, that's come crazy. On. Come on, that's hey. so much wasted time. I don't believe it. That's so I I you know it's I get it. I I don't not trust Mike Cliss, but there's going to be too much pressure from other teams. You're gonna. <laughs> You're, you can't wait till the end of the month. You got to move on this thing. Well, but if it, it, it also takes two, right? If, if I'm Sean Payton, do I want to immediately jump at the Broncos, let's say, or do I want to wait and see what happens with the Chargers? Do I want to see if they go out in the first round of the playoffs and get beat and get beat badly? And do the Chargers maybe decide Brandon Staley's not the guy? Do you want to wait and see what Sean McVay ultimately does? Uh, you know, plenty of smoke out there that McVay uh, might be looking to uh, ju- uh, sit back and, and take a sabbatical after the end of this season. So, uh, and if if I'm Jim Harbaugh, hey, do you, if you are using the NFL – as leverage to try to get a better deal out of Michigan. And I know d you and, and, and Derek Wolf think it's the other way around. Uh, we had a long conversation with Joel Klatt. I, I trust Joel. Joel has been in the same room as Jim Harbaugh 12 times in the last two years calling games. His feeling is, is that Harbaugh not happy with what he's getting paid at Michigan, but would prefer to stay at Michigan, but is using this NFL interest as a way to drive up the price. And All let, right, let me just like- tell you this. I am – do not get it confused. I don't know Jim Harbaugh. Nobody knows Jim Harbaugh. I have no idea what lurks in that soul. So <laughs> sure, you know, and, and that's what really the deeper conversation Derek and I had. Well, what kind of life do you live differently with 15 million than 25 million? And a hey, Rachel, Mike, to each his own, right? Like, I don't know. I, I don't know what motivates the dude. But when he tells, and how random was it that the one interview he gives was yeah. to a dude in Charlotte who we talked to who was very cagey about his relationship with Jim Harbaugh. Like he wasn't, I was like, how did, how, why did he talk to you of all people? But yeah. he used the word think, I think I'll be back at Michigan. And that leaves the door just to open a crack. So you could be right. He's a kooky dude. And it would not surprise me at all. If he gets a little bit more money for Michigan, he would turn down a lot of money from the NFL. It would not surprise me. Real quick, a bunch of people are just tuning in and saying, what happened? So Mike Kliss yesterday with Mark and Mike on the morning show said that he didn't expect anything to happen for the coaching um, search until later this month for them to make a hire, though. Correct, Mike? Right. 
Three weeks. He said within at least, it would be at least three weeks. Interesting. Which we've all been saying, you know, if you're going to go after Jim Harbaugh, you got to move fast. Like time is ticking. So this is, you know, a very interesting point. I also do want to point out, Nick said, hearing Mike Evans and DMAC going back and forth brings back memories from mornings in my dad's truck. LOL. I love that. You guys, look, you know, they're legends. I'm so lucky to be able to work with you. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a backhanded compliment to call us legends. So you I'll, are, I'll, though. I'll were we, scream, were we screaming at each other? Were we screaming at each other? Typically, that's how these things end up. Be prepared, Rachel. Uh, this could easily devolve very easily. Well, Mike, who do you want as the coach? I want uh, I want Peyton. I want Sean Peyton. Um, Why? Because he, he he brings everything that I'm looking for. He he brings somebody who has been a coach before. Uh, he's he's current with with today's NFL. I I respect and I would certainly settle for Harbaugh based on the experience that he's had and the success he's had in the NFL before. But he's been away from the NFL for a while. Peyton hasn't, so he would be stepping right back into a league, into a game that um, that he knows and, and knows very well. And it, it also makes sense that he brings a, a couple more elements that I think are so important. One, he's a hard ass. And, and, and let's be honest, if, if there's one thing about Jerry Rosberg that we've all fallen in love with early on is the idea that this guy comes across as, as blunt, as honest, and we like that after everything that we've gone through with, with a hack at the last year. So you, you got to have a coach that comes in that clearly is the guy in charge from day one. I think that's important for the whole football team. It's definitely important for Russell Wilson. And the final component of all this is if if you have any hope of getting anything uh, salvageable from Russell Wilson moving forward, I want a guy who has a clear, recent, uh, terrific track record when it comes to offensive football and working with quarterbacks. So – to me, Peyton checks all the boxes. Okay. I'd, I'd want Harbaugh, but I would settle for Peyton. And so I think Mike and I are more or less on the same page. I right, mean, but, I, make your case, but make your case for Harbaugh. Why, why Harbaugh? Well, because I, I, I want somebody who's going to oversee personnel because I don't trust George Peyton. And I think when Harbaugh comes in, it's the Harbaugh way. I, I don't know that about Sean Payton. And also, Sean Payton's going to cost you a draft pick. And I do think you need to start rebuilding and giving up a first-round draft pick to me is painful. I think both guys are going to cost you 20 to 25 million per year for X amount of time. So I think that's, that's a push. And I just think the Broncos need a more severe culture change that Jim Harbaugh would bring. Also, I think Sean Payton tapped out of coaching a little bit. I do question his motives for wanting to come back in. And although he's followed the NFL, he's got it from the cushy point of view as a broadcaster. So I, I'm, I'm a little scratch my head about his complete motivation compared to Harbaugh, who's got his foot firmly down on the gas. He's never let up on it. And I love the fact that Jim Harbaugh has something to prove to everybody, and that's to win a Super Bowl, whereas Sean Payton's already done it. But that's not to disparage Sean Payton. I think Sean Payton would come in with a strong handle of how to handle things. Um, and I just think, I think Harbaugh is more of the wake-up call this organization needs rather than Sean Payton. But listen, man, I'm not going to quibble. If you get Sean Payton, you got a proven winner. And you had somebody that, you know, succeeded with Drew Brees and perhaps can. But you got to understand, too, I've moved on from Russell Wilson. I'm just, you know, hashtag stuck with Russ. And all, all I'm thinking about is how to manage him for a year, maybe two before you move on. So in my mind, I also want a guy who is going to sit Russell on the bench if he's not having a good game. I want a guy personnel-wise who's going to be aggressively pursuing a quarterback and understands the importance of it. You know, so to me, Harbaugh is that guy because he dealt with a very difficult situation between Alex Smith and Colin Kaepernick. And he's got that in his background. Sean Payne's never really done that. He's never really had to do that in terms of his legacy with the Saints. Well, the thing about both those guys, though, that I, that I like is that you're, you're talking about two guys with, with proven quarterback uh, track records that – you can look at it from the standpoint, all right, not only do they each give you a chance to maybe rescue Russell Wilson, and I'm, I'm with you, I'm, I'm dubious about the ability to, to do that, but also with the understanding that whatever direction you go in with the quarterback after Russ, 
you're at least dealing with two guys that you feel like you can trust, whether it's developing, uh, uh, you know, a rookie quarterback, whether it's developing a quarterback that maybe needs some football rehab that you're you're bringing in. Either way, at least I feel confident that I, I, I've got the, the quarterback position in adult hands. Uh, Nathan in the comments says, is there any interest do you think in Derek Carr to be a backup to Russell Wilson, Mike? Not a backup. Derek Carr is going to be a starter in the league. He's he's done enough in this league to to justify being a starter. He's going to be a starter somewhere. So no, I would I would put a quick uh, kibosh on that. Uh, we've also uh, no, people. I mean that's zero interest in Derek Carr. Uh, I I don't think it's crazy to get a free agent, low level quarterback like mm-hmm. we could have had with Baker Mayfield theoretically. Although Baker Mayfield may command a lot more money, so I'm I'm not necessarily against that. And, yeah, here we go. I mean, t- time to draft somebody in the middle rounds as a quarterback. I wouldn't do it in the third round, but you could twist my arm in the fourth round for, like, Hendon Hooker. And then we are back in the jackpot, baby, in 2024. <laughs> We're right back at it in 2024. Have you heard, Mike, have you heard d whole spiel on what he wants to happen in the next couple of years? Oh, please bring me up to date because – there's so many theories out there. What happened to David Shaw? I thought the last time you love and I, David you, Shaw. You love David Shaw. Now you moved David Shaw. To David Shaw. So, um, and you you want the the, the Tebow offense here for uh, Russell Wilson? I don't know. There's so many. You got so many different things out there in the wind. Where where are we at today? No, no, no. no. See, what today? I have, today. what I have. No, no, no. I have something for everything. So it's not so many things, but for different situations, I have oh, something I for them. So just because life is complicated and there's a lot of things out there uh-huh. doesn't mean I'm misguided. I just have <laughs> answers for what presents itself, and there just so happens to be a lot of stuff. Listen, David Shaw with Jim Harbaugh is not crazy. I mean, I'll give you a couple of David Shaw scenarios. You could bring him in as an offensive coordinator. He worked with Harbaugh at Stanford. Another thing. Well, you wanted to be the head coach. A couple of weeks ago, you were like. Uh, I, I would be fine with David Shaw. Well, the problem here, but here's the problem. They didn't fire George Payton, okay? So so if they had fired George Payton, th- again, it's a different set of circumstances. If they had done, done what I really wanted, fire Payton, June 1st, post, post-June 1st designated for, uh, for Russ, burn to the ground, 0-17, and then you got your shot at Caleb Williams or Drake May. You can figure it out. Those are going to be the top two guys in the 2024 draft. The problem is if you win seven or eight games, what are we talking about for quarterback? Say we win eight games. Russell Wilson yesterday, I don't know how delusional this guy is, but he's talking about winning like two Super Bowl rings and maybe more. It's like, dude, you know, give me a break. Let's let's start with a winning record. But, I mean, all right, I'll ask you, Mike. Let me just go here. And, Rachel, how many wins does Russell Wilson get you next year? Well, you, you got to tell me. Who's the head coach going to be? Who's the uh, Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh? Okay. Yep. Jim Harbaugh. If Jim Harbaugh is the coach and, and you oh, no, have- no, no, let me stop. Sean Payton. I'll go with what you want. Sean okay. Payton. Okay. If Sean Payton is the head coach and and you're 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 telling me that they're gonna have a much better uh luck with injuries next year, is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Then yeah, I think this is a team that's uh is is back into a a nine win, possibly ten win. Uh, season yes sniffing right. the playoffs you know this week would be important next year. yes exactly that, that this would be the week where they wouldn't have clinched the spot but it might be one of those things that if they win they're in or they they win and somebody else loses that i could see that scenario developing for next year all right see you guys have a much rosier view of russell wilson i got them winning seven games with russell wilson with sean payton next year so i do have them improving and a three win improvement is actually a lot in the nfl To go from nine wins to 12 wins, to go from six wins to nine wins in the NFL is actually a lot. So I got them actually improving quite a bit to a whole seven wins. But now you're drafting what? 18, 19, 20, something along those lines. And now you're out of the quarterback sweepstakes and you're stuck with Russ for another year. And this is where you got to hope. This is hope and pray. Mike, this is your territory. You got to hope and pray that mid round quarterback that you picked up either this year or next year has some sort of possibilities of success. So we're, we're barreling right down the mic. No, look, there, there's so, first of all, let, let, let me just, the hope and, and, and pray type thing. You, you characterize me as that is my strategy. Why, why don't you recognize that is exactly the same strategy that goes 
when you're drafting one of these quarterbacks high up in the first round? You don't think that the Jets right now are in hope and pray territory when it comes to Zach Wilson? You don't think that uh, a number of quarterbacks who have flamed out, Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, Carson Wentz, you don't think at some point their organizations looked at those guys and realized, oh, oh, we better hope. And, and hope and pray this works out. These guys are all developmental quarterbacks, D-Mac. They're, you're all hoping that they work out. There are very few that are short things right from the start. So that's the first thing. I think you are underestimating um, the, the, the growth that this team, the jump that this team can make ne next year. When you look at the fact that they could set an NFL record this week if they lose by one score, um, this week, they'll set an NFL record for most one score losses in NFL history. Meanwhile, I'm looking at the Minnesota Vikings, who have won 11 of their 12 games this year, have been by one score or less. It's you can't tell me that uh, the Minnesota Vikings and Kevin O'Connell and um, uh, Kirk Cousins have somehow figured out the magic formula to winning close games. There is such an element of randomness and luck involved to it that tells me that there's no way the Vikings win that many one score games next year, just like there's no way the Broncos lose that many one score games next year. So I think with, when you factor that in with the impact that a legitimate coach can make and, and come on, isn't it quite clear that the longer we move away from Nathaniel Hackett, the more we pin the majority of what's happened this year on Nathaniel Hackett. So don't underestimate no. how big of a jump, uh, a much improved coach, better health, and just the randomness of, of these close games, how you could easily go from four wins to nine. Should I respond? I would yes. love it. Uh, I'll keep it simple. Um, your, 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 your optimism is encouraging and joyous. And so, and, and why would we have anything but, but hope? But analytically and statistically, of course, uh, it'd be easy to debunk you with the randomness that you feel of these first round guys compared to later rounds. I mean, it's actually preposterous by any metric if you want to look at. For every but, one that succeeds. But I, the concept. Just, that's just fact. Skip, I don't get to finish. Skip, I <laughs> shut up. Skip, I don't get to finish. All right, yeah, go ahead, Skip. Skip. Go, ahead, skip. Shannon. go ahead, Shannon. Skip, 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 <laughs> skip. Rachel, take it. Just take it. I love this. Uh, Jake at the back end, though, always does great research. And he did say in each Harbaugh's first season in San Fran and Peyton's first season in New Orleans, those teams made the playoffs. But next year, too, the Broncos had a relatively tough schedule, I would say. Obviously, the AFC West is tough, or it should have been even a little bit more tough. But do you think the schedule gods will be a little bit nicer next year, considering how bad the Broncos were this year? Well, you got to start with, a, start with the last place schedule. Mm -hmm. That helps. That helps yeah, I mean, even the schedule this year wasn't that hard when you when you end up looking at it. I it mean, was supposed even, to be hard, though. Even the Rams game was like, well, they should beat the Rams. I mean, even yeah. the tough games weren't all that difficult. Listen, I, I do think, like, here's here's an interesting one. The Broncos in the last 11 games are 6-5 and five against the Chargers. 6-5. and five. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, they're 0-11 against the Chiefs. So you, you inherently do play teams in your own division better. But we are about to see another historic thing for the Broncos. Winless in the division if they lose to the Chargers. So somehow they are losing all six games to the Chargers, Raiders, and Chiefs if they lose on Sunday. The concept that we were this close, Mike, that we're, oh my God, almost touchdowns. The truth of the matter is, it really isn't that close, not really. And that's the difference between a great quarterback and a below average quarterback. You get the clutchness of Kyle Orton with Russell Wilson. I mean, he had the ball in his hands against the Chiefs with a chance to win or tie the game. And that went to a disastrous moment. And everybody's kind of focused on Chris Jones and the penalties that should have happened. But let's face it, why did it get to that point anyways? The Broncos had the ball in their hand, not with Russell Wilson, but with Rippon twice against the uh who was that ripping um the second team that ripping played okay. was it the jets who was it, it the, i don't know it, yeah. i forget who knows and then yeah, listen mike i love it i love you i love everybody i love optimism and I, i'm realizing quickly me actually showing a dash of reality about how poor russell wilson really is as a quarterback is bumming everybody out so I know you but think why do you think why do you think 
he can't be fixed. This is a guy who just because he's old, older, he's older and short. Because this is a guy who just well he, older, short, and hurt. Two years ago, he was just two years younger. Okay, I mean, it's not like the guy is aged seven years. My, what was the difference between two Peyton years. Manning in 2015 and 2013? Physical, physical, complete physical breakdown. There you go. Football. If if you watch okay. Russell, you telling me that Russell Wilson, when he steps into a throw. When he has time, steps into a throw, throws with conviction. Are you telling me he doesn't have above average NFL arm talent? Not anymore. Know. He does not. Actually, oh, come he does. on. Come on. Come well, on. I, I, I just judged that by watching him going out to practice on the regular and, you know, my eyes. And I, I'm looking at other NFL quarterbacks. He's below average in everything. His below average in foot speed, below average in arm strength below average in accuracy, and below average in height. He's just a below average quarterback. But despite all of that, this is a guy who threw 40 touchdowns just two years ago. This is a guy who finished up last year, last year, not two years ago, last year, finished up playing really good football. Uh, you've got people who have watched him his entire career in Seattle who say, no way did we think it would be this bad. I'm sorry. I just – I, I – Freely admit he has been awful this year, but I just do not buy the idea that he's washed. No, yeah. not Mike, I'm not ready to go you've there. Got, you've gotten your way with how to run the team for the past seven years, and you're gonna get your way again. They have done nothing but take your advice and follow your plan for the past seven years, and you're gonna get it for the next couple of years too. So you can be angry at me or call me X, Y, and Z. But the truth of the matter is not for one second has the Denver Broncos taken my advice or my suggestions and they have followed your path repeatedly. You're All right. Gonna well, get, you're going to get your way again, Mike. You're going to get your way. again. Hey, I, I, you cannot come on this show right now and tell me when that deal was done for Russell Wilson that you didn't love it. You loved it. You did. I mean, you had every opportunity to be the. Uh, canary in the coal mine, and sit back and say, this is a bad deal. Instead, you were like, hey, who cares what they paid Deshaun Watson? Let's give him, let's give Russell Wilson $300 million guaranteed. You love the deal when it happened, okay? So just please admit that, that that's where you were when this, you had no problem when this deal was done. None. Yes, I was wrong. You following my plan. You love the plan. At the end of last year. But, okay, it. so first of all, first of all, I was wrong. Let's just start there. That's what you want to hear. I was wrong. I was wrong that it was a great deal, and I was wrong about the contract. I was wrong about both those things. So I'll start there. But why was I enthusiastic about it in the first place? It's because they had failed so mightily in doing the things they needed to do that they weren't going to do the things. So in lieu of doing things the right way, yeah. But I was wrong. Here's why I was wrong. I hadn't studied Russell Wilson. I hadn't considered Russell Wilson. I hadn't talked to anybody about Russell Wilson. I couldn't believe Russell Wilson wanted to come here in the first place. I was waiting for Aaron Rodgers to heroically walk through the ayahuasca doors. And that didn't happen because that was the plan with, with Hackett. That's why I like I didn't come on the air and say, hey, Hackett would be perfect with Russell Wilson. I was Hackett Rogers because we had a general manager too dumb to figure out we needed a quarterback and drafted MVP, team MVP quarterback, team MVP Patrick Sertan. So you couldn't get better in terms of value to the team, and you're four and 12. So your MVP, your M, think about this for a second. He's your MVP. It's such a great pick. He's the best player on your 4-12 and 12 team. All right. Rachel, like real quick. Real quick, Rachel. Real quick. 10 seconds. Go. It, thank you for DMAC to uh, finally expose his agenda, his anti-George Payton agenda, and let's just be honest here. All George Payton had to do was draft Mac Jones a couple years ago, and you'd hear nothing but bubbles being blown at – George Payton from DMAC right now. Well, all correct, because we'd, we'd be in the playoffs. All say we'd Mac, be... Jones. Mac Jones, and he would be George Payton's biggest fan right now. No doubt, because I like winning games and going to the playoffs. Mac Jones, quarterback of the Patriots, in the playoffs last year, and they are this close. 
They win this weekend. They're in the playoffs again, twice with Mac Jones. So, yes, Mike, you got me. You exposed me. I like going to the playoffs and winning football games and having quarterbacks that lead my team. Oh, my God. I'm red-handed. You got me, Mike. You completely got me. Well, George, I would be supporting. Well, well, I would be supporting. A, you all right. Really all right. All right. All right. Like in any good couples therapy, we have to give each other credit. So credit is due to Mike for saying you should hold on to the contract extensions. DMAC and I both agree on that. So, Mike, I now need you to give credit to DMAC for something he's been correct about. Go ahead. What? What? I need you to. I need you to give him credit. Something that he was right about? Something he's been right about. It can be anything. <sighs> okay. Uh, in a heroic <laughs> move on draft night in 2018, he said that uh, the Broncos should take Josh Allen over Josh Rosen. Her th that's just heroic. Heroic. So I give you credit <laughs> at that moment for saying that they should have taken Josh Allen over Josh Rosen. You were right. And to be specific, I said uh, take Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson over uh, Josh Rosen. Yes, yes, you, did. Thank, yes thank you did. Thank you, Mike. And that yes. would have um, – we'd be in the Super Bowl this year had they followed my advice. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah. but, but I'll uh, give you that one even though – even though even though we all know that – had. Oh, oh, here we go, Rachel. You can't Josh do it. Allen, oh, you even can't though I know. It. We all know, Rachel. Even though if Josh Allen had already been gone, he'd have been banging the table – Draft Sam Darnold. Draft Sam Darnold. Anyway. If I was hey, you were three, right. you I'd were be right. a Hall of Fame baseball player for the Red Sox. You were right. You were right. Josh Allen. We've handed out you were right, both you were of right. you. I'm proud of both of you. So let's get into it. CBS had an article today of like the top 10 crazy offseason predictions. Are you guys ready for these? Let's do them. Number 10, Jimmy Garoppolo signs with the New York Jets. Love it or hate it. Yeah, I see Jimmy. Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be um, either is he a free in, agent. In, yes, will be. He might be in New England. Yeah, I. I uh, he might be in New England. Yeah, I, I agree with Mike on that. I think there's a better. Um, but D Mac, Mac Jones, they're going to the playoffs. How can they <laughs> go with Jimmy Garoppolo? <laughs> yeah, what am I talking about? No, my, never mind. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm wrong. Jets, 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 Jets. Um, All right, uh, sure, Jared? maybe I don't know. Derek Carr signs with the Washington Commanders. Love it or hate it? Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense, yep. Yeah. Yep. Tony Pollard draws major interest in free agency and leaves the Cowboys. Who? Tony, Tony Pollard? Yep. Oh. Yeah, because they're paying Zeke, right? They're still paying Zeke, and yep. uh, Zeke's a little – yeah, I could, I, they, they, they can't keep paying – they can't pay two running backs. So, yeah, Pollard goes somewhere else, yeah. Dan Schneider sells the team to Jeff Bezos, Jay Z, and Matthew McConaughey. All right. Well, the NFL, all right. The NFL all, right all right. All right. Um, all right. All right. I, 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 I doubt it. He's, I mean, unless he's actually forced to sell the team by the NFL. So I guess that's what they're saying. He's forced to sell the team. Um, I don't think so. I think if they were going to force him to do it, it would have already happened, actually. He's not going to just sell it on his own. He, well, I don't know about that, D.D. Mack, because he, it, it, it sure seemed like he was ready to dig dig in and, and just fight. But then it was like two weeks later, he, he started – he hired a firm to investigate selling the team. So I think he's open to it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, I don't think he'll – ah, that's a good one. I don't know. I'd have to think about that one. I, I know the NFL would like it. The problem, though, was with uh, Dan Snyder is – he there's a lot of skeletons in the closet mm -hmm. and and so uh, that's a tricky one because he could burn the whole house down if he wanted to um i'll say i'll i'll say i'll put that at 55 percent that he does sell the team because at the end of the day you know i mean what are the washington commanders worth that the broncos are 4.65 billion yeah. that that's probably a six billion dollar valuation on that team that's crazy to even think about all right where do you both think obj is gonna go Oh, oh, geez. Well, I mean, he got too done. late here to go anywhere, right? Yeah, he got yeah. done dirty by the Cowboys, didn't he? He visited yeah. a couple other teams, and it was just, yeah, hey, he he visited. It was all good. He visits the Cowboys, and, the, and on the way out, the Cowboys are like, we got all these concerns about his knee and his medical, and it's yeah. like, dude, just just keep it to yourself. Why do you have to burn the guy on the way out? I'll say, I'll say nobody. I I think, um, and 
And here's why. It's just too unpredictable at this point. And like even Jamal Murray. So we are this late with Jamal Murray's ACL. And he still needs days off every now and then. Because while he's good enough to play, his recovery time process, it is difficult. So I, I just don't think there's a way for him to really be as impactful of a player in this postseason for anybody, frankly. So I'll, I'll say nobody for this postseason. Well, this is off season. So think off about season, next- it could be, I mean, it could be anybody, you know, he's still a dynamic receiver. He's, I mean, what team out there is really struggling with their, I mean, he'll probably end up with like the chiefs or the bills. <laughs> I mean, and players at that age, they just want to win. Yeah. You know? Maybe goes back to the Rams, you know, Stafford coming back cup coming sure. back, you know, well, CBS has him joining the Giants again. A reunion with the Giants. Do we yeah, love that? that that's clickbait. That's clickbait. I don't buy that. All right. This next one. Lamar Jackson demands a trade. Uh, no. He'll be back with the Ravens. His- with, a new, with a new deal or franchise? Yeah, with a new deal. I think, I think the relationship with John Harbaugh and Lamar Jackson is actually pretty amazing. And they'll, they'll figure it out. He'll, he'll be back there with the Ravens with the New Deal. What do you think about him being his own agent? Do you guys like that? Or do you think just follow what everyone else does and, you know, let somebody else handle hey, it? I, I, think, I think it's smart because when, when it comes to these quarterbacks now, you know nobody's going to go above the Sean Watson money. Nobody's going to do that. Uh, so that that's, that's the ceiling that's not going to be reached. So otherwise, everybody else is kind of slotted when it comes to the, the guaranteed money. He fits in there comfortably. So I, 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 I think – yeah, save the agent for fees. Do it yourself. I mean, it's fine if you <laughs> – I mean, if you really are uh, competent in terms of negotiations and financial arrangements and you know – I mean, that that would – it's remarkable to me that you would be um, that skilled at all those complicated things. So, yeah, I mean, if you can do it, if you're comfortable like that, I mean, not many are. Yeah, but you can just uh, hire a lawyer. Hire a lawyer to say, "Hey, look at the look at the contract. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Go over the legalese for me, and you you save a ton of money." It, it's complicated because y- you you have to be on the front line negotiating about yourself. Um, I think it can build up some animosity and some some real weirdness. I, I think if you're just a slam dunk great player, all that. Um, I, yeah, I think it's a mistake, actually. You know, it's, it's, I think when you're doing negotiations at that level, you need a bit of a buffer. And it's That's true, because they are going to say, you know, they, they are going to say negative things about you, you know, in order to try. It's like when the baseball player goes to arbitration and you got to get up and the baseball team literally makes their case to a judge why you <laughs> suck, <laughs> you know, why you shouldn't be paid that money. Right. So I think, I'd may, I think I'd rather have an agent hey, you go hear all the bad things they say about me. I don't want to be sitting across them as they tell me that stuff. True. Okay. Uh, Number four, this one actually affects the Broncos. Sean Payton doesn't return to the NFL. What do you think? Oh, I could absolutely see that. See, this is one of the things. He's got a very cushy life right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, that TV life, are you talking about soft? I mean, you're like the fifth guy on a five-man panel on Sundays and you do a – variety of set up for you interviews where you just have to show up. I mean, that is, listen, that job is hard to get. What you have to do to actually get that job is like practically impossible. Mm -hmm. But for like Phil Cowher, dude, he he doesn't have any competitive drive anymore. He doesn't have any fire. He just wants to sit there with his big chin and rip on Jeff Saturday. You know, I mean, there's no, there's no, the competitiveness left his soul. Tony Romo, he lost all of his competitive juice. He, mm-hmm. he could have come back. He could have done like Peyton Manning, recover from injury, and kept the fire going. But for some guys, it just burns out. And when once you tap out of that, to go back to that grind, I mean, yeah, I but, but like, here's I think a, be the right situation. Here's a disagree. This guy already has been banished from the NFL once. So he, he knows what it's like, and he didn't like it, and he couldn't wait to get back. Here's the other thing. He wanted to coach this year. The plan was him, Tom Brady, in Miami. That was the plan until Brian Flores' lawsuit blew it all up. So that was the arrangement. So this this sitting out this year, this only comes about because the Miami thing 
got got um, got sideways. Otherwise, Sean Payton would have been coaching this year the Dolphins. So this is a guy that definitely wants to coach. Uh, I, I disagree with D-Mac. He will be back coaching next year, no doubt. Mike, you ever been to Malibu? <laughs> yes. Visiting. <laughs> have you ever had uh, sushi at Nobu in Malibu? Not a sushi fan, but I am a Nobu fan. Mm-hmm. Well, I haven't had sushi at Nobu either. I couldn't afford that. But I've been to Malibu a couple of times, and it's quite a life. It's quite a life, let me tell you. Once you sort of – it's not like I've experienced it in total, but I get it. You know, um, we'll see with Sean Payne. I'm not going to say you're wrong. I'm not going to say you're wrong, but we'll see. You know, and, and, and to Rachel's point, it would not shock me thinking about how comfortable things are for him right now. It wouldn't shock me at the end of the day. He was just like, I'll pass. I'm good making. Dude, isn't he making like $10 million a year for that stupid Fox Sports show? That stupid Fox Sports show. Jeez, D-Mac, don't hold back. Okay, number three, the NFL makes roughing the passer even worse. They're thinking about making it a reviewable penalty. Oh, 100%. All penalties should be able to be reviewed. It's ridiculous that they're not. I agree with that. I yep. thought you were saying that they shouldn't. Okay, number two. This one also affects the Broncos. Jim Harbaugh agrees to coach the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, that, that that almost seems too easy, though, to connect that dot. You know, former Colt, favorite, all that. Um, hey, they, they're, they're even worse off right now with a quarterback situation than the Broncos are. At least you could look at Russell Wilson and think there might be uh, some some way you can bring it up. Who who they got? And, and and their record is is such that um, you know where where are they slated to to draft. So I I, I think the the Bronco job is more attractive than the the Colts job is. And plus, it's, don't it's, don't it's, forget, don't forget, going back, again, going back home again with the expectations and stuff. I don't know. It almost creates a, a a level of pressure. Do you really want it? Yeah, but don't forget the Colts were smart enough to draft a guard with the number six overall pick in twenty eighteen. So. I mean, how can you go wrong with a top six guard? Uh, I think it's the same thing for the Colts, the Panthers, the Broncos, anybody. Money and power. And he's got all the power he wants in Michigan. All of it. You cannot get more power than Jim Harbaugh has at Michigan. Okay? So what NFL team gives him that same sort of sense of entitlement and and power? I think the Colts could. I think the Broncos more or less could. So then it comes down to money. So Mm -hmm. what you're really asking me is where would you rather be if money and power are the same in Carolina, Indy, and the Broncos? And that is a tough damn question to answer. All three have serious problems at quarterback. Um, I'd say Carolina would probably be the best place to go right now. I mean, they're on at least a, a bit of an uptick it's crazy that they've actually played better without Christian McCaffrey. And I, I guess I'm not surprised, and that's not to denigrate Christian. It's just to say you cannot focus an offense against an undersized running back receiver. You just can't. He's a great piece of the puzzle. He's got value, but not the value that they put on him. He's perfect in San Francisco, and it was just too much in Carolina. I think Carolina overall is the quickest way to go, Plus, plus – if he cares about his family, he wouldn't compete directly against his brother until the Super Bowl, theoretically, like he did years past. Whereas with Indy and with the Broncos, he'd be in the AFC. It is an easier division. Yeah, that, that's true. It, 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 there's an easier path, quicker path to success. I, I would I would agree with DMAC, though, in this sense, Rachel, that it, it, picking Indy is, is just taking the easy, hey, the connection. And I don't think that that's going to play nearly as much of a role as uh, some people think. All right. The, the, the tricky part, too, and you should take it in consideration. Here's what sucks if everything's equal about the Broncos. Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes. That sucks. You know as a coach, look at look at the, the Panthers division. Uh, that division's terrible. And so is the AFC South. I mean, those are both way easier paths than through the AFC West. Way easier. Well, and this next one doesn't help your point at all. The number one top crazy thing that they have on this list is Tom Brady jumps pirate ships yep. to the oh. Las Vegas. Yep. That, that's happening. That's oh. done. That's, that's, How does that not happen? That's a lock. 
That's a lock. How does it not happen in Vegas? It makes too much sense. Too much oh. sense. Too much sense. Man, yeah. a guy like Brady, Vegas, reunited with Joshy Poo. He's uh he's got built-in talent, Devontae Adams, Darren oh. Waller. He's got his Edelman clone and Hunter Renfro. No, it, it's are it's, you kidding me? That's done. That, how does how does that not happen? Oh, so the Broncos fourth in the AFC West next year, then? Yes. Seven wins. I told you. Mike. Boy, that's gonna be a fun division. Wouldn't that be you, fun? You can't change now. You cannot change now. You said nine or ten wins. I think the Broncos have the potential to be a better team than the, than the Raiders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even with Brady. And by the way, we're talking again with the idea that they get Sean Payton or Jim Harbaugh. Who would you rather have, Sean Payton, Jim Harbaugh, or Josh McDaniels? So I'll take my chances. I think the Broncos would have the coaching advantage. If you're telling me that they're going to have better health, then I, I think overall personnel, defensively, we know that they're better than the Raiders. Um, yeah, and Brady. Are you sure? I love, I love, Mike, hey, wait, are you Tom sure? Brady. But what has Tom Brady done this year in Tampa? How has he changed everything in Tampa like he did in years past? I mean, they're going to be they're going to be what an eight and nine, nine and eight football team. They're going to be they're going to win a division and they're going to host a playoff game. But come on, he he has not had most of most of the time we've talked about Tom Brady all year looking like wow, this is a guy looks like football field is the last place he wants to be. I do I do believe that if he wants to continue to play, Vegas makes a lot of sense. But and and from a from a, 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 a the standpoint the storyline standpoint we get Tom Brady twice a year how cool is that but I'm not I'm not convinced uh, Tom Brady is the uh, the difference maker he once was you always like to talk about it D Mac hey when when Father Time comes a knocking it can happen overnight same yeah, thing hey, Mike. Mike. The, same the dude's six, with Tommy the dude's six foot five in great shape and single he's fine. He, you know, he's all right. Six foot five, football star, single, Vegas. What could go wrong? I, I think, I though, I, I, I can almost see like an Elvis type thing here for Tom. You know, he takes over one of the top floors, of the casino, and he starts to get, you know, all paranoid about different things. And before oh. you know it, the guy is a recluse. He only comes out and to, to play football games, and then he goes back up to his dark room that everybody's looking up in. They can't see in it. Ah, oh, could it, it could be Elvis like? Uh, you sure right. he's not? You sure he's not on the party deck on the Rio with Playboy bunnies? You, you sure? You sure he's not living that life? Sing, I've seen that his girlfriend. Life. We were we all found out when I learned about his girlfriend here. Uh, we do have some breaking news though. The University of Cincinnati Health Physicians will provide an update on the condition and care of Buffalo Bill safety Demar Hamlin at eleven thirty Mountain Time today. That's exciting news. We know that he is awake. He opened his eyes last night. And he's able to squeeze hands neurologically intact, they said. So, of course, we're sending our thought and prayers to DeMar and his family for his continued care. Uh, last thing, you guys, though, I want to get to is Coach Prime announced one of his biggest fears, and it just so happens to be here in the state of Colorado. Take a listen. I don't even know how to say this. It's that deep. It's that real. It's that authentic. How do I say it? Just say it. Lord, just say it. My spirit is saying, just say it. All right. I'm scared of Ralphie. I said it. He's <laughs> scared of Ralphie. Would you be scared of the big buffalo that's up there in Boulder, Mike Evans? Hey, I, I've been lucky enough to be down on the field when, when, when Ralphie runs, and that is – an impressive, imposing, intimidating, awesome thing. And listen, the handlers that that work with Ralphie, they they are trained. They are actually considered student student athletes uh, for all the work they put in. So um, I, I I wouldn't want to mess with, I, with Ralphie when he talks about having like a celebrity run with Ralphie uh, every week. Um, maybe jog alongside, you know. But I'm I'm not getting I'm not. Up close and personal with uh, with with Ralphie, uh, she's she's a uh, she's a potential handful. I love her. She she is fantastic, she. and uh, she is handled wonderfully. Although there are a couple of videos over the years of Ralphie getting loose a little bit, but overall, there's nothing to fear from Ralphie because of how well she's actually handled by those yeah. amazing students there at CU. But, but I would not run in front of Ralphie. He seemed to. 
not be clear as the tradition. You're fine, Neon. You're fine, Prime. Everybody, everybody runs behind Ralphie. You're good. Yeah. I like oh, it. I also you know what? You know what? I'd pay money to see Snoop Dogg get a six-second lead and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Only if we can get one of his voiceovers like we do on Planet Earth or whatever. Yeah, what? I love how dramatic Snoop, that video was. Snoop from won his greatest, his, his best 40 time ever. That's for sure. <laughs> For sure. All right. Plenty of laughs. I'm glad these two figured out and we could agree who was right on certain things. Uh, but as always, an absolute pleasure, Mike Evans. Thank you so much for hanging with us on this Thursday. And to everybody in the comments, same to you. Thank you so much. We love reading them. We will see you guys tomorrow morning, 1030 a.m. Bye, everybody. Cheers.